Today's topic is ordinal utility. Hicks and Ellen through their indifference curve approach advocated the concept of ordinal utility. Ordinal utility theory states that that satisfaction which a consumer derives from the consumption of goods and services can be measured through ranking system according to which goods and services that provide higher level of satisfaction to the consumer are assigned higher ranks while the goods and services that provide less satisfaction are assigned lower ranks. Thus, the ordinal utility is a qualitative method that is used to measure consumption satisfaction. Moving ahead with indifference curves and indifference curve schedules. Indifference curves measure utility ordinarily and explains the consumer behavior in terms of his or her preferences for different combinations of goods. An indifference curve shows different combinations of goods that give same level of utility to the consumer. This table shows the indifference schedule of a consumer for different combinations of two commodities X and Y. The consumer obtains equal level of satisfaction from these combinations. Let us see the table of indifference schedules of consumer. In this indifference schedule, a consumer will be indifferent to combinations 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 because each combination provide equal amount of satisfaction to him. This is an example of one such indifferent schedule and any number of such schedules can be made which may represent a higher or lower level of satisfaction to the consumer. Now what is indifference curve? When various combinations of a particular indifference schedule are plotted on a graph and when a line joins these locus points, the resultant diagram is called as indifference curve or we can say IC. The IC is an ISO utility curve that represents an equal amount of satisfaction at all its points. An IC represents just one indifferent schedule, but when more number of such indifferent schedules are plotted on a graph, then the resultant diagram will be called an indifference map on which the lower IC1 represents the lesser level of satisfaction and vice versa. In this diagram, point Q on IC2 represents a larger amount of X than point P on IC1 due to which the consumer will prefer to be at point Q. Therefore, the indifference curve analysis states that an IC which lies farther from the origin O represents the larger combinations of goods X and Y and hence it will provide a higher level of satisfaction than an IC which lies nearer to the origin. This diagram represents the indifference curves. Let us discuss certain assumptions of indifference curve. The indifference curve approach is based on these assumptions. First is it is assumed that the consumer has a fixed amount of money to buy two goods at a given constant price. Second is consumer always prefer to move to higher indifference curve to get higher and higher satisfaction. Third is ordinal measure of utility where the consumer ranks his preferences on the basis of satisfaction obtained from each combination of goods. Fourth is indifference curve analysis assumes diminishing marginal rate of substitution due to which it is convex to the origin. Fifth is Consumer is assumed to behave rationally and try to maximize his total satisfaction. Sixth assumption of transitivity which implies that the consumer's tastes are consistent. Moving ahead to law of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. An important principle of economic theory is that the marginal rate of substitution of x for y that is MRS XY decreases as more and more of good X is substituted for good Y. In other words, as the consumer gets more and more goods of X, he is prepared to forego less and less quantity of good Y. 
The principle of diminishing marginal rate of substitution is illustrated in this diagram. In this diagram, we can see when a consumer moves down from combination A to B, he gives up delta Y of good Y for getting the compensating gain and delta X of good X. Thus, the marginal rate of substitution of X for Y that is MR is XY in this case is delta Y1 divided by delta X. But as the consumer slides down along the curve IC, the length of delta Y becomes shorter and shorter while the length of delta X remains the same. Therefore, in this diagram, delta Y2 at point B is less than delta Y1 at point A. Similarly, delta Y4 at point D is less than delta Y3 at point C. This states that as the consumer buys more of good X, the stock of good Y decreases with him, but he would forego less and less quantity of good Y for a given increment in good X. In other words, the marginal rate of substitution of X for Y that is MRSXY falls as the consumer has more of good X and less of good Y. The diminishing MRSXY can also be measured by drawing tangents at different points on the indifference curve. The MRSXY at the point on the IC is equals to the slope of the IC at that point which can be measured by the tangent of the angle which the tangent line makes with the x axis. In this diagram three tangents D, E, F, G and H, I are drawn at points A, B and C respectively on the given indifference curve. The slope of tangent D, E is equals to O, D divided by O, E. Hence, the marginal rate of substitution of X for Y at point A is equals to OD divided by OE. Similarly, the marginal rate of substitution of X for Y at point B is equals to OF divided by OG and at point C it is equals to OH divided by OI. It can be seen that OF divided by OG is smaller than OD by OE and OH by OI is smaller than OF by OG. Thus, the MRSXY diminishes a consumer slides down on his indifference curve. Now, let us discuss certain factors responsible for diminishing marginal rate of substitution that is MRS. First is MRS falls due to diminishing marginal utility. As the consumer buys more and more of a good, the intensity of his want for that good decreases. Initially, the consumer stock of good Y is relatively large and that of good X, it is relatively small. Since the consumer like to have more of good X in the beginning, gives up a large amount of Y for an additional unit of X. On the other hand, as the stock of good Y declines, the intensity liking for it increases due to which he is prepared to give up less and less good Y for an additional unit of good X. Second is goods are imperfect substitutes for each other. If two goods are perfect substitutes, then an increase in quantity of one and decrease in the quantity of another will not make any difference. Therefore, the MRSXY remains constant and does not decrease. Third is the law of diminishing marginal rate of substitution will hold only if an increase in the quantity of one good does not increase the want satisfying power of the other good. Now we will discuss properties of indifference curve. First is indifference curves are always convex to the origin and indifference curve is convex to the origin because of diminishing MRS, MRS declines continuously because of law of diminishing marginal utility. Second is indifference curve slopes downwards. It implies that as a consumer consumes more of one good, he must consume less of the other good. Third is higher indifference curve represents higher level of satisfaction. Fourth is indifference curves can never intersect each other. As two indifference curves do represent the same level of satisfaction, they cannot intersect each other. Our next topic is budget line 
and consumer preferences. A budget line or more technically a budget constraint is an important component when analyzing consumer behavior. It is also known as price line as budget line illustrates all the possible combinations of two goods that the consumer can buy at given price and available budget. It is important to note that the amount of a good that a consumer can buy depends upon his income and the price of the good. The slope of a budget line is negative as it slopes downwards. It is measured by dividing the price of a good on the horizontal axis and by price of the good on the vertical axis. Thus, the slope is Px divided by Py. A consumer in his attempt to maximize his satisfaction would like to reach at the highest possible indifference curve but in his pursuit to achieve maximum satisfaction he has to face two constraints. First is he has to pay a given price for the goods and second is he has a limited amount of money income or budget to make the purchase. Under these constraints, how much amount of each good he would buy and how much satisfaction he will achieve depends on the, his choice of purchases of different quantities of goods X and Y. Therefore, the drawing of a budget line to represent prices of two goods and his money income into indifference curve is very important. This diagram presents the budget line of a consumer for goods X and Y. Let's take an example. Suppose the consumer has a budget to spend rupees 100 on two good say x and y. If the price of x is rupees 10 per unit and the price of y is rupees 5 per unit, then the consumer can buy either 10 units of x or 20 units of y. If a straight line joining 10x and 20y is drawn, it is called price line or budget line. The price line shows all the combinations of two goods that a consumer can afford to buy combination R that lies above the budget line will give him greater level of satisfaction but it is beyond his reach. On the other hand the combination S is within his reach but he has sufficient budget to buy more of X and Y which gives him more satisfaction. Therefore, with the assumption that the whole of given budget is spent to purchase goods X and Y at the prevailing prices, the consumer will choose from all those combinations which lie on the budget line. According to indifference curve analysis, a consumer is at equilibrium where the budget line is tangent to an indifference curve at equilibrium point of marginal rate of substitution MRSXY is equals to price ratio which is Px divided by Py of two commodities. The budget line has two other significant characteristics namely change in income and change in price. Now a question arises that how does a budget line shifts when price changes? A change in product prices shifts the budget line a decline in the prices of one or both products would increase the real income which leads to a shift in the curve to the right. Conversely, an increase in the prices of one or both products would decrease the real income and will lead to shift the curve towards left. In this diagram, the initial price line was AB. If the price of X falls from rupees 10 to rupees 5, he can buy 20 units of X which is shown by the price line AC and similarly if the price increases from 10 to 20 he can buy 5 units of X and price line will shift leftwards to AD. Now let us discuss shift in budget line when income changes. The location of a budget line varies with money income. An increase in money income shifts the budget line to right while a decrease in money income shifts the budget line to left. In this diagram, the initial price line was AB. If the prices of two goods remains the same, but if the income increases to rupees 200, then the consumer can buy twice the quantity of both the goods. And thus, the new price line CD shifts parallel right. Similarly, if the income is half, the price line will shift to the left of EF. 
therefore, the two determinants of price line are A prices of the two goods, B the money income of the consumer. As stated earlier, the slope of an indifference curve portrays the MRS XY. Similarly, the slope of the budget line or we can say price line represents the ratio of prices of the two goods. In this diagram, the slope of price line AB is OA by OB. It states that the consumer with a given budget can buy either OB quantity of good X or OA quantity of good Y. Moving further with applications of indifference curve analysis. In addition to the analysis of consumer demand, the indifference curves have several other applications. Some important applications are discussed here. First is effects of subsidy on consumers. The indifference curve technique can be used to measure the effects of government subsidy on low income groups. Take a situation when the subsidy is not paid in cash, but the consumer receives supply of cereals at subsidized rates at the government pay price difference to the distributor. This is implemented in most of the states in India. In this diagram, the income is measured on the vertical axis and supply of cereals on the horizontal axis. Suppose the consumer income is OM and his income line without subsidy is MN. When he gets cereals at a subsidized price that is at lower price, his price income line is MP which is equivalent to a fall in the price of cereals. At this income line, he is in equilibrium at point E on the curve I1 where he buys OB quantity of cereals by spending MS amount of money. The full market price of OB cereals is MD on the line, MN where the curve I0 touches. The government therefore pays SD amount of subsidy, but the consumer receives cereals at a lower price. If the subsidy were to be paid to him in cash, he would receive MR amount of money. The equivalent variation MR shows that in the absence of the subsidy, a cash payment would bring the consumer on the same indifference curve which makes him as better off as the subsidy. But the value of the subsidy MR to the consumer is smaller than the cost of subsidy DS to the government. In this case, the cost of subsidy to the exchequer will also be less. Second is the problem of rationing. The indifference curve technique is used to explain the problem arising from various systems of rationing. Usually rationing consists of giving specific and equal quantities of goods to each individual. The other rather liberal scheme is to allow an individual more or less quantities of the rationed goods according to his taste. It can be shown with the help of indifference curve analysis that the later scheme is better and beneficial than the former. Suppose two goods rice and wheat are rationed and the prices of the two goods are equal. Let each consumer has the same money income. Thus, thus given the income and price ratios of the two goods, MN is the income line, price line or budget line in this diagram. Rice is taken on vertical axis and wheat on the horizontal axis. According to the first system of rationing, both consumers A and B are given equal specific quantities of rice and wheat OR plus OW. Consumer A is on indifference curve IA and B is on IB. With the introduction of the liberal scheme, each can have more or less of rice or wheat according to his taste. In this situation, A will move from P to Q on the higher indifference curve IA1. Now he can have ORA of rice plus OWA of wheat. Similarly, B will move from P to R on the higher indifference curve IB1 and can buy ORB of rice plus OWB of wheat. With the introduction of the liberal scheme of rationing, both the consumers derive greater satisfaction the total quantity of goods sold is the same. For the situation where B buys more quantity of wheat, WWB, he purchases less quantity of rice, RRB, and when A buys RRB, more of rice, he purchases WWB, less of wheat. 
thus the purpose of government to ensure control distribution of goods is not disturbed let us conclude this chapter today we have discussed indifference curves indifference schedule application of indifference curve analysis law of diminishing marginal rate of substitution budget line and preferences under different situations and shift in budget line thank you Thank you.